drop shadows. This is one of the features that you get in almost every image editing program. It is something that you will learn about very quickly if you know, you've been attending a course about that particular program. But it is a tool that is more versatile than it appears. Today, we're going to talk about the Drop Shadow tool in the context of GIMP, which is of course a free open source image editor that I use a lot. We're going to look at some of the things that we can do that you know, may not be immediately obvious. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Today, let's look at drop shadows. Let's start simple by just looking at the basic drop shadow. Now, a drop shadow is very useful in and of itself. It gives you the 3D effect by separating the foreground and the background, because of course, it gives you that illusion of depth. Even the default drop shadow settings already look pretty good. You get a shadow that is, you know, slightly offset to the right and down, slightly blurred, and, you know, not very obvious. It has actually been set to 60% opacity by default. But still, the effect is appreciable. You can already achieve something that looks pretty interesting. But today it's not about that. It's about trying to see if we can push it further to get, you know, more interesting effects. So first of all, let us explore shifting the shadow around. We know what the default looks like, but why not have it dead center? That's actually an interesting effect as well because it creates a nice little border around, you know, whatever it is you have your drop shadow for. Having it up and to the left also creates a somewhat interesting effect because now you get a feeling that, you know, the stuff is actually popping off the page. So yeah, you don't always have to stick to the default of having the shadow, you know, to the right and down. Then let's see what we can do by tweaking the two other values, which are the opacity as well as the blurring. Have you tried, say, a completely solid drop shadow? That is one that is either not blurred at all or only very slightly blurred. In fact, what you get is sort of a more modern look. Because, well, very blurry drop shadows are something that were used more in the past. At least that's what it feels like. So if you're trying to do one of those modern, clean, minimalistic designs or whatever people are into these days, you can try using a drop shadow that isn't blurred at all, or it's just very slightly blurred. You can also increase or decrease the opacity to make the effect either more subtle or more pronounced. So there's that. With just these four settings, you can actually create pretty interesting looking drop shadows, and you can even aim for different styles. But can we push things further? There is one setting in the drop shadow dialog box that we haven't looked at yet, and that is the shadow color. Now, it doesn't make much sense to have shadows that are of, you know, non-dark colors, right? Well, in fact, if we stop thinking about it as a shadow, we can actually do some interesting effects. For example, if you're trying to put black text on a light background, it doesn't really make sense to give it a drop shadow per se. And the reason for that is, well, black on black just doesn't give you the contrast, it just doesn't give you the visual quality that you want. That doesn't mean using drop shadows is inadmissible. You can always choose a bright color for a drop shadow, and basically what you've created isn't so much of a shadow as a glow. With that, you can actually experiment with all the things we've discussed before, you know, moving it around, changing its amount of blurring, and you can actually achieve some very interesting effects. The simplest of what you can do is you can have the lightsaber glow, which is essentially having your drop shadow dead center and having it be a particular color. The blurring needs to be turned up quite an amount so that you can actually see the color falling off the edges of your text. So that's one. Of course, don't be afraid to shift it around, you know, tweak up the blurring and just by trying the two styles we've mentioned earlier on, you know, the retro look versus the more modern minimalistic look, you can see that you can still achieve the same effect, even if you were to use a colored drop shadow. But say this isn't enough for you, 
you want to push this even further, perhaps you feel that, you know, it's not quite pronounced enough, it's way too subtle, you want to turn it up, well, you can do that. First, select the drop shadow layer. Then, open up the Levels tool, and in the Channels tab, switch over to the Alpha channel. Basically, what you're doing here is you're manipulating the transparency of that particular layer. And with this, you can actually achieve some very interesting effects. Depending on which handle you drag, you can actually thin the shadow, or you can sort of make it thicker and rounded looking. And you can, of course, tweak its intensity. So yeah, spend some time on the Layers dialog box and you will be able to sort of tweak up your shadow to do things that drop shadows weren't really meant to do. The outline effect is something I've particularly found useful on quite a few occasions because, well, I wanted an outline for my text and this is actually the quickest way to do it in GIMP. Generating an outline is pretty simple. First, create a centered drop shadow. The blur amount determines the outline thickness, so keep the value low. Anywhere between 2 and 5 is good. Then, open the Levels tool. Set the channel to Alpha, and simply drag the input white point arrow to the left. The effect will be most pronounced if the white and black arrows overlap, but this creates a very rough outline. Maintaining a little space gives you a smoother outline, even though its shape may look a little weird at corners. So there you go, these are some of the things that you can do with the Drop Shadow tool that isn't immediately apparent. To sort of help you further, if you, you know, still need a little bit more guidance when it comes to using Drop Shadows, here are some tips I found just by, you know, observing how Drop Shadows are used out there in the wild. First and foremost, if you are unsure, then keep the effect more or less subtle. You don't have to make the shadow glaringly obvious, as long as it's there, it actually serves its purpose. You don't want it to sort of jump out and steal the thunder, it just needs to, you know, sort of be there in the background. Second, don't be afraid to experiment with the unusual settings. Like I mentioned earlier, some less conventional settings like using no blurring at all may not really occur to you or you may feel kind of funny doing things that way, but don't be. Experiment with these extreme values and see what they give you. Finally, and here's an interesting one, on some places I've actually seen an interesting effect in which instead of having just one drop shadow, several drop shadows are actually generated and stacked on top of each other. This is also one of those sort of trendy design things that are happening now. And yeah, if you do it tastefully, it actually looks pretty interesting. I would say if you're doing this, you really want to keep it subtle as well. And when you do, it is something that exists, it is something that adds visual quality to your design. And sometimes for some elements, you really do need them to be like that. Anyway, that wraps it up for this episode. I hope next time when you get to use Drop Shadows, you'll give some of these tips a try. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on photography and image editing subjects. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.